In this video, we're going to model daylight hours using the sine function. We're going to create what's called a sinusoidal model. And before we jump into it, the basic idea is that there are many natural phenomena that are cyclic in nature. So for example, if we have, we could have a function that models the amount of rain that you get as a function of the month of the year. And there will be places where there are certain times of the year where you get a lot of rain and there will be a low point during the year where you get the least amount of rain that you can and you'll get back around to the same time of the year again the next year and you're back to having as much rain as you can this is a cyclic phenomena so there's lots of cyclic phenomena a tide going from high to low back to high temperature is a function of the month of the year water flow rates in a river as a function of the time of the day there are things that naturally progress between a high a low and back to the high so what we're going to work on for this example is modeling daylight hours as a function of the time of the year so in the, in the northern hemisphere we know that during the winter we get uh, fewer daylight hours than we do during the summer because of the tilt of the earth and the rotation of the earth around the sun so in this example we have vancouver british columbia having a low number of daylight hours at 8.3 hours happening in january and a high of 16.2 hours of daylight in july so it says sketch one cycle of a trigonometric or sinusoidal when we have these uh, functions that look like sine or cosine functions we call those sinusoidal models or functions and they're they're cyclic models so sketch one cycle of a trigonometric or sinusoidal graph that models the situation use your graph to find a sinusoidal model that means find an equation for the hours of daylight as a function of the month of the year graph your model um, then graph your model we want to graph it using a graphing calculator uh, and use the graph to approximate the number of days during the year when there are at least 15 hours of daylight so at least 15 hours of daylight and we're told to use one month is about 30 and a half days and t equal one needs to correspond to january 1st so first we'll start with a rough sketch of the model so we're going to be modeling h this is going to be hours of daylight and we're going to model it as a function of time t where we're measuring time in months and what we know is that at month number one january we start off with as few daylight hours as we can possibly have during the year and we reach some high point where we have the most number of hours of daylight that we can possibly have and then as we head back towards January again we'll reach that same low we'll be back where we started so this is a classic sinusoidal or cyclic model so the high point is reached in July and there are 12 months in the year so if we start in January and we end in January we'll be in month 13 so 13 minus 1 is 12 months so the period the period is 12 months we go through one full cycle in 12 months so that's the period we have a 12 month period and we know that we have a high of 16.2 hours and a low of 8.3 hours so here's here's a uh, next thing the next thing that we could calculate would be the midline for this model so we'll do a midline and the midline or the vertical shift the midline which is the same as the vertical shift is going to be the average of these two numbers it's going to be the crest plus the trough divided by two the average or the midpoint or midway between those two numbers so to get our midline we're going to go 16.2 plus 8.3 but we have to average those two numbers to find the middle and that's going to be 24.5 over 2 or 
point two five. So our midline is right here at twelve point two five. And then we could calculate our amplitude. How high is the crest above the midline or how low is the trough below the midline? Well that's half the distance. The amplitude is half the distance between the crest and the trough. So to get amplitude we'll take the crest minus the trough and we'll have it. So this is going to be what 7.9 all over 2 which is going to be 3.95. There's our amplitude. So we have period, we have midline, we have amplitude. We know these functions are broken nicely into force. We know that the period is 12 months. Everything that can happen in terms of daylight happens over a 12 month period. We start in July, or sorry, we start in January, we end in January. A fourth of the 12 month period is equal to three. So we know these tick marks happen every three months. So it's one plus three is four, plus three is seven. That's our July. Seven corresponds to July. Seven plus three is 10. 10 plus three brings us back to January again. And then once we've kind of marked out the key features in this graph, what we need to do is decide what model we're going to use to model it. We could use the cosine or the sine function because this is a sinusoidal model. So for example, I could reflect the cosine function, which usually does this over the midline and then shift it one to the right and use that. Or I could take the sine function and shift it four units to the right, four units horizontally to the right, and I could use the sine function as my model. So I am going to choose to use the sine function. So I'm going to say the number of hours of daylight as a function of time is going to be equal to, what's well, going to be my amplitude, right? The form is going to be amplitude times sine of b times time plus c plus d, where this is the amplitude, vertical shift, this number adjust for my period, and c comes from distributing the period into the shift. So in other words, this has the function a sine b. To get, to get it in a form that handles shift, we factor the coefficient off the input variable, so t plus c over b, and we know that the shift goes right in here, and this is plus d. So this is where the shift will go. So we can kind of put, put our model together at this point. A, the amplitude, is 3.95 times the sine of b, which we haven't figured out yet, plus d. d is just the midline or the vertical shift, so 12.25. 12 two, five, and then B we figure out by taking B times T, but we plug the period number in for T, so B times 12, and we recognize that B times the period, which is 12 months, has to equal two pi to get one rotation around the unit circle, so we divide both sides by 12 and reduce that fraction to pi over six, so pi over 6 goes in for b, and then it's going to be t. We factored pi over 6 off, and now the shift will go here, and I'm shifting the sine function 4 units to the right. So to shift the sine 4 units to the right, I need to subtract 4 from the input variable. And then if I want it in this form up here, I can distribute the pi over 6 into that set of parentheses and get that my model for hours of daylight as a function of time is 3.95 sine pi over 6t minus pi over 6 times 4 is 4 pi over 6 which reduces to 2 pi over 3 plus the vertical shift 12.25. I'm probably into where we can't see it there. So the, the next part is we need to use, uh, we need to graph 
our model in a graphing calculator and use it to find out when there are more than 15 hours of daylight per year. So stepping over into GeoGebra, I've already gone ahead and graphed my model. So here's January corresponding to t equal to 1 right here. 13 gives me back to January, so I'm going through one full cycle. And what I did is I graphed the line I graphed the line y equal 15 so we, we were asked to determine when we have more than 15 hours of daylight so here's the line y equals 15 and there's at least 15 hours of daylight anytime the height model this is height this axis was my time axis so, or hours, sorry, H is hours, this is hours. So I have more than 50, or I have at least 15 hours of daylight anytime I'm at or above the line. We should say hours equals 15. That's this line right here. So as long as we're at or above this line, we have more than 15 hours. So what we'll do is we'll solve this graphically because we don't know how to solve trigonometric equations yet. So to solve it graphically, what I'm going to do is use GeoGebra to find the intersections of those lines. So in GeoGebra, where the usual point tool is, in the drop-down menu I'll grab the intersect and I'll highlight both functions and GeoGebra gives me this intersection. I step over here, highlight both functions, it gives me this intersection. And now I look over here and I see that GeoGebra has given me the ordered pairs that go with those points. I'm sorry, I'd like to wipe the screen clean real quick. So the point A is 5.47, 15 hours, and 8.53, 15 hours. So this, it's given me these two ordered pairs. 5.47 corresponds to 15 hours. And right here I have 8.53 corresponding to 15 hours. And, and these are months, right? The input was time in months with one corresponding to January. So I can get the total number of months I'm above 15 hours. The total number of months I'm above 15 hours is going to be 8.57 months in where I hit 15 minus the first month number where I hit 15. This is 5. Point or seven, and my measurement here is in months. And then we just multiply that by there are 30.5 days per month. So we get a dimension analysis, canceling months, and this will give us an answer in days. And using a calculator, we do 8.53 minus 5.47 times 30.95, we get 93.33. So what we'll say is, there are about 93 days during which there are at least 15 hours of daylight. And this was for Vancouver, British Columbia.